Right at the heart of Nairobi's Kahawa West suburb, we meet up with a family that can well describe the pain of seeing their loved one go through cancer, a disease that has robbed them the joy they used to receive from her, but still holding on to hope. As Rashida Jones puts it, I know that in life there will be sickness, devastation, disappointments, heartache. It's a given. What's not a given is the way you choose to get through it all. If you look hard enough, you can always find the bright side. And this is exactly what Esther Wamboy Gishumbi is doing, having hope when all seems to be tough, because hope is necessary in every condition. My name is Esther Wamboy Gishumbi. I'm born again. I'm 25 years old. Last born in a family, in, a, in my family. I have two brothers, two sisters. I also live with my mom and dad. I finished my Form 4 in the year 2010. In Form 4, that's when I decided I'd love to be a nurse. So I remember I was in Nakuru when I was called back home. It was the last, actually it was the deadline to apply for the KMTC spot for nursing. So I came from Nakuru. I applied and I actually didn't think I'd get it the first time because I'd had stories of how people would apply KMTC and they would take years before they get admitted there. But I thank God I got to join KMTC in 2011, September 2011 class. I finished school in March 2015. That's when I did my college final. In around 2017, uh, June. That's when I fell ill. Uh, I started having stomach problems. Uh, I would go to hospital. They would treat me. I was treated for a while until in August. When I went to uh, to hospital and uh, to see a gynecologist, and he suggested I do a pap smear. And actually, when the pap smear was not possible to be done, because uh, the gynecologist noticed I had a tumor. And it was very friable and bleeding to touch. So I was sent for a biopsy right away. And I went, did the biopsy. Uh, I took my sample to MP Shah. After a while, that's when I got the results. That was uh, on the 25th of August 2017. We were with my mom at Mpisha. Majina yangu naitwa Anna Wamaitha Nishombi. Uh, Esther amekuwa mtoto very active. Ata akiwa mdogo ni wale watoto hata kutembea kutembea alitembea akiwa mdogo sana e, e, alikuwa mdogo sana na amekuwa very active hata vile au huwa wana nini wanafanya michezo yao wakiwa wadogo nilikuwa nikiona Esther ni very active 
awale watoto very clean hata wewe unafurahia na kusoma kwake amesoma ame vizuri ni mtoto hajanisumbua kutoka akiwa mdogo hata akiwa a primary secondary na hata kwa college hiyo mwaka ya mwisho hiyo sasa akaanza kuniambia mami ninasikia ninasikia ni sijisikii vizuri nini nikamwambia esta siwe sasa umekuwa daktari si huko na pia na madaktari huko siwenda hospitali huko anaenda ananiambia amepatiwa dawa amepona nini nini hivyo sasa dakika ya mwisho akaniambia hapana mami mimi nasikia yani najisikia vibaya ni ninasikia ni, niko mgonjwa nikamwambia sasa usiende hospitali mimi ndio nitakuja nikupeleke since i had a nursing background i knew what the results i read the results and I saw when I saw the results I immediately knew I had cancer I remember outside the Mbisha lab I usually just there. So we sat there with my mom. And uh, I just cried. My mom was praying. Alipo tu niambia hivyo akilia. Sasa nikamshika. Nikamuliza Esther a uh, ni jambo gani litaweza mshinda Mungu hmm? kansa ni nini kwa Mungu na unajua Mungu ataweza ponya kansa nikamongelesha kidogo hapo alafu sasa nikamshika tukaomba tukiwa tu hapo kwa hospitali tukiwa wawili nikaomba nikaomba sasa ndio akakul aka kidogo nikamwambia sasa itatubidi tu tujiweke nguvu kwa sababu sasa hii ime happen tuachie Mungu yote I was just hoping to myself that it was an early stage and had read about things like cryotherapy where you don't have to go through chemotherapy and I was hoping that is what I would go through and I remember that was on a Friday and on Monday <coughs> we returned the results to the doctor who had sent us to take the biopsy that was at Nema hospital and he sent us to Aga Khan and he told us we had to rush because we had to had to be treated first and then I have another auntie who is a breast cancer survivor she told us about Mpisha that's where we first saw the first doctor he first sent us for chest x-ray to see how far the cancer had spread it if it had spread to the lungs at we thank God it had not spread to the lungs then I think he suggested for surgery and my aunt refused and she suggested we see another doctor, another oncologist. So we booked for another appointment, still at Mpisha. That's when he told us, he sent me for 
an MRI scan so that we could tell the staging of the disease and it was at stage 2b he said that was not so bad and I could do chemo chemotherapy radiotherapy and brachytherapy and it would go away kusema kweli ulikuwa ni wakati mgumu sana kwa sababu sister yangu ule mkubwa alikuwa na breast cancer na hata ametolewa na pia uh, msichana wake sasa nilikuwa nikiona vile alikuwa akisumbuka uh, na vile hiyo matibabu ilivyompeleka na still uh, nilikuwa na sister yangu mwingine naye pia alipas juu ya kansa ya cervical cancer sasa niliposikia hiyo nilistuka sana lakini ilinibidi nijiweke nguvu kwa sababu ya Esther kwa sababu atungelia zote wawili Eva Barros puts it well by saying that in a family life love is the oil that eases friction the cement that binds closer together and the music that brings harmony and this is exactly what Esther's family has portrayed towards her and indeed the love of a family is life's greatest blessing my family started looking for the funds before that i had i had applied for nursing council exam licensing licensing exams so when i got the news i had two weeks to the exam the doctor suggested <coughs> i don't start the treatment until i finish the exam because we didn't know how i would react to the hair chemotherapy the side effects and i knew the side effects so it was not something i was looking forward to i did five sessions of chemo i did 25 sessions of radiotherapy i did three sessions of brachytherapy there were eight weeks of treatments and they were so bad i was weak nausea and vomiting and i had no appetite i had grown thin so much had changed but i thank god i finished i finished the treatment on the 4th of december ilikuwa tu ni wakati mgumu kwa sababu hata wacha pesa hiyo mambo ya kuamka usiku kwa sababu kwanza nilikuwa nikiamka saa kumi ndio nimtaarishe nimpikie ndio tuweze kwenda wakati alianza hii hi chemotherapy hiyo ndio huwa ni mbaya kabisa kwa sababu hata chakula na unampikia mchele akiona hivi anaanza kutapika My name is uh, Mike Gishombe an elder brother to Essie and uh, this is my brother uh, Simon Gita is my name um, also brother to Essie the main the main challenge uh, uh, of course uh, has been to see her suffering all that you know the pain the painful moments one of the worst things that happens to me is watching her suffer in so much pain and that there's nothing you can do about it um sometimes she stand up and you know hug mom so tight when she's undergoing through this pain and you know you'd feel you'd feel really bad you'd feel very you'd be very sympathetic or very empathetic other than that she's been really strong and sometimes she's even uh, when in normal cases you are the ones who are supposed to be strong for her sometimes she takes that role and she she's strong for us from there so you are not declared cancer free immediately 
you declared cancer free after like six months so for me in july that's when i was declared cancer free after i'd done i've gone for all my clinic follow-ups and the doctor had seen there was no the tumor was not growing back so like it's like immediately after I was declared cancer free it was in July it was cold I started getting just pains so it was pain that would radiate to the back and to the arm so it called like pneumonia just went to a clinic here around home and I was treated for pneumonia so after the three days there was no change I went did I did the cheek stress ray and it was clear so he said it was not pneumonia maybe I was just allergic to the cold the July cold he gave me some medications but the pain kept on increasing. Later on, we went to see my oncologist. He also uh, just gave me analgesics for the pain, but they were not working. After a week, after like a week, I took my, I went again for a check surgery. I just recommended myself and I went. That's when they the x-ray showed like I had fluid in m around my lungs and I waited for like five days then I went I did the CT scan and it was so bad because I done the CT scans before during my treatment my before treatment this time I reacted to the contrast that they usually give so right away I noted I said to myself hey there must be something this is not okay so after a few days I got the the results and it showed that I had a mass in my lung and three nodules the thought of cancer came back again. I took the results to my oncologist and he also got worried. He sent me for a biopsy. I waited for like 10 minutes. My mom was asking me, have the results come? And I'm like, no, it not come. I didn't want to tell her first. After a while, I just opened them. I peeped. I didn't open. I didn't like open the whole envelope. I peeped. Hey, and I wish I had not. I keep. Same August. It was on twentieth. The same same words that had been used on the other results. I read because I went straight to the conclusion, and I saw it was cancer. Ulikuwa tu ni wakati mkumu, mkumu kabisa, hata mi nika, nika jisikia wakati uo sasa nilikuwa chini, chini kabisa. Lakini niliomba mungu na akanipatia nguvu. Na neka mungu kama vile ulivyo mponya ya kwanza, hata hii mungu huko na uwezo. Na unajua sasa hiyo ya kwanza tulikuwa tumejimaliza kabisa kifeza, Kwa sababu watukwe tukifikiria anything can happen. I remember 
I just told God thank you for the results he had given me. Because I really didn't know I would, I would battle the cancer again. This time it being lung cancer. I just told God thank you for the result and I told him now this is your battle. Silver and gold belongs to the Lord and indeed the family is positive that God shall provide in his own ways through people. Also we've had uh, financial challenges because uh, you know she was first diagnosed with cervical cancer last year in 2017. We went through all uh, the treatment necessary, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and uh, it wasn't. Uh, it, it doesn't come cheap. We don't have uh, medical insurance, so it was uh, all paid in cash. But uh, we are grateful. We are grateful uh, because uh, even after we exhausted our means, our financial means, some friends and family came to our help. We have spent uh, over 500,000 uh, just on uh, treatment, uh, the chemo only. There is the drugs uh, that uh, she usually gets. There is also the scans, the CT scans and the MRI scans. So all that in total, so for, for just uh, three cycles, as a family we spent uh, like uh, 700,000, everything included. But uh, I think uh, the lowest moment was uh, when uh, Last month, in October, we were told that uh, the three cycles that she's done so far of chemotherapy, the cycles have not worked. Uh, we were told that uh, the disease has actually progressed, and not only just progressed, but progressed rapidly. So she's had to change to a new treatment regime. So we need 1.5 million shillings. But for now, for now, our resources, all, all our resources are depleted. So this is why we came up uh, with some friends and agreed to have a fundraiser uh, to help us uh, get uh, the finances to con uh, for IC to continue with the treatment. So we are going to have a fundraiser uh, on second on Sunday, 2nd of December at uh, Kahawa West Baptist Church. The fundraiser is uh, targeting raising an amount of uh, 1.5 million shillings. So right now we've already started uh, the fundraising because we have a pay bill number. The pay bill number is uh, 914743. With the account number being Esther Gishumbi. So we urge anyone, any well-wisher, any friend, and uh, any other person who might uh, uh, be touched to help us. Uh, so we urge you to uh, to deposit uh, uh, any funds that you may have. We are receiving any amount of funds, so there isn't any little or, or a lot. So kindly deposit. One thing I love about Essie is that she has this big heart that is ready to accommodate everyone. And um, I'd really love to see her get back to normal. Um, yeah, and spread the happiness that she has to others. My name is Mary Waidira Gitao. I'm a nurse by profession. I've known Esther since we were in college. If there is something like perfect, I can just describe her as the perfect friend I had and I always have. So I remember last year when I called her once and then she was done and told her, Esther, what's up? That's when she told me the story. I've not been feeling well, blah, blah. And then the diagnosis. I just felt like my, my world has just crumbled down. With cancer, it's not like I lost a relative to cancer too. It's something that I can't like and can't pray for anyone to go through it it's just but like a nightmare but 
I know she'll make it. She's a strong lady. We have her back. And she she's got that very supporting family. They are always there for her and she'll make it. My mama was so angry at God. Because that's all I was praying for. I just they came out to her. That's that. For him to hit me. My man had gotten so many side effects. I'd spent so many days in different hospitals. But now I ran God. The pain has reduced a little bit. And now I can sleep in bed. Uh, for two days now, I've slept in my bed. I was even telling my mom I've missed my bed. And it's, we tend to take things for granted. Like, I didn't know like you could have a bed and never use it. Even drinking water. Sometimes you have water, but you're not able to drink it. You have food, uh, like I have all kind of foods, all kind of fruits, but I'm not able to take them. So, let's not take things for granted and let's learn to thank God for everything. Nataa kushukuru mungu kwa sababu watu wa kanisa letu la Kahawa West Baptist Church wamekuwa uh, watu wa kutusaidia sana uh, kwa kwa pesa zao na pia kwa maombi na pia kwa kutembea hapa kwa sababu hii nyumba imekuwa hata sijui nitaweza sema ni nini each and every day hapa kukosi mtu wakati mwingine hata tukiwa hospitali wako huko wanatugoja na shukuru Mungu kwa watu wa kanisa letu sana nasema tu Mungu awabariki you know it's a big burden for my family but i'm trusting God that he'll provide so that i can be able to get all the treatments and I know the doctor, the doctor is trying his best to treat me, but I'm trusting God for healing. So, <coughs> my next chemo is scheduled for 29. And I'm trusting God that he'll provide the funds. And after that, another session then I get to do a CT scan that's the most curious part because having gotten the first results that the first one did not work I'm just hoping that this one is working that even the way I'm able to sleep in bed God is healing me and he will heal me completely and just as his word says in Psalms and I will live to proclaim his goodness in my life for his healing. Roy Bennett puts it well by saying keep going your hardest times often lead to the greatest moments of your life. Keep going. Tough situations build strong people in the end.